Hello and welcome to Clone Wars Conversations. I'm James Arnold Taylor. This is part two of this double episode interview with my special guest, voice of the sun, star killer, Palpatine, the emperor, and of course, Darth Maul, Sam Witwer. If you've not caught part one, I suggest checking it out first so you can pick up where the rest of us left off. Talking all things Star Wars, from Sam's all-time favorite character to the process of recording Clone Wars. Sam Witwer knows his stuff and knows how he feels about all of it too, and never has a hard time putting those thoughts together in a fun and informative way. So join me now as we conclude our time with Darth Maul, and perhaps even get to hear a reunion between the Sith and the Jedi. Welcome to the conversation. Rogue One, Force Awakens, you and I have been, again, the luckiest kids, Star Wars nerds in the world because yes. David Collins and so many other wonderful, Tom Kane, have been able to work in these films in providing voice. It's an interesting thing because they they need a bunch of, you know, they, they need all this background voice work and, and really the way that it's come up is they're like, where are we going to find a bunch of people who can generate background dialogue that know anything about Star Wars. Oh, yeah. that's right, we have a And they can kind of do those voices that fit into that very specific, very specific depending notch. on the, like Rogue One, you and David did some wonderful stuff. I just saw it again a few nights ago and the, the troopers. stormtrooper stuff. Yeah, yeah, really great stuff. I mean, and, and you're adding to the story and all of it is all thanks to Matt Wood. Matt Wood, General yeah. Grievous himself. Yeah, I knew there was a good side to yeah. Grievous. <laughs> But him calling us all to come in and play with him for yeah. a, uh, you know a day or two. He, Matt's such an interesting guy. Um, his his involvement is uh, extreme when it comes to Star Wars. It's amazing because and he's under underrated. Underrated because he's if should should Luke should he ever walk away from Lucasfilm and do something else, uh, a huge amount of institutional knowledge will have left the building because <laughs> yes. this is a guy who I mean he's. Ben Learn Burt's, from Ben Burt. I mean, ben his, his Pad yeah, he's his he's, Padawan. Yeah, so and he, Ben Burt is like one of my all-time heroes. It just, oh my god, I know. The I, first time being at the commissary there at the at the ranch and seeing Ben Burt sitting at another table talking with guys, and then gives you one of these, you know, and you're like, well, I can die now. Okay, so <laughs> I was at Skywalker Ranch and and I was visiting Matt in the tech building, which is Skywalker's house. Yeah, I love that place. Oh, it's incredible. It's like this big place. It looks <laughs> the like a history, winery. The history, the flavor, it, mm -hmm. yeah. It looks like a winery, and, and in fact, it is a winery. It is a winery. But it's also Skywalker <laughs> yeah. sound. There's a scoring stage in there yeah. and everything. We, In fact, I got a chance to be to sit in on the scoring session of Force Unleashed. and was, Really? Yeah, oh, I see wow. an orchestra playing Star Wars yeah. music. It was pretty cool. Um, but uh, so, so I was there, and he brings me into Ben Burt's office, and so I'm talking to Ben Burt. He's right there <laughs> looking me in the eye and I'm talking to him. And he told he tells a story of like when ILM was in Van Nuys and how uh, <laughs> John Dykstra and them, in order to pass inspection on zoning laws and all the st crazy stuff they were doing in that warehouse, that they built false walls over the real stuff that they had oh, on really? the walls. Yeah, they built <laughs> false walls, which is such an ILM solution to of a course. problem. Because to that that type of, for example, Clone Wars being produced at Big Rock Ranch for many many years. Big yeah. Rock Ranch is the lesser known twin to Skywalker Ranch. I'm not yeah. necessarily a twin, but they're very different. Yeah. But it's all part of the same complex. Yeah. It's just down the road. Just down the road from Skywalker is another ranch called Big Rock Ranch, which is another Lucasfilm thing. And why do they call it Big Rock Ranch? Because when you come up on a road near the entrance, there's a giant rock. Big rock. But as you may remember, there used to be a lot of graffiti on that rock. Yeah. And then one day it was gone. And the rumor, which I think I've had substantiated, is not a rumor. George had a bunch of ILM guys go and paint the rock as a rock. Paint it <laughs> like a rock. <laughs> paint over. They didn't clean it. They painted it. To get, pro to get practice on how yeah. do you paint rocks. How to paint a rock. So go and paint that rock like it's a rock. And now it's, <laughs> it looks like a rock. He painted a rock to make it look like a rock. So <laughs> so for ILM, for Ben Burt to tell me, oh yeah, they built these walls over the walls. I'm like, that is 
Of course, ILM they has did. not changed in terms of the no. crazy, stupid stuff that they do. So he uh -huh. also, on the desk, when I was talking to him, first of yeah. all, he had a keyboard in the side of the room. Okay. He said, "Don't touch these settings are, are saved." And it was R two D two was the. Oh man! So he actually went and went. You know, did all these oh. live R2 sounds for us, some of which obviously were very different, but we yeah. never heard because he was just messing around with it. Yeah. And then on his desk, he had, because you just said during, um, you know, there's this in between. famous video, you can see a Ben Burt, there's like a radio tower with these high tension wires, wire yeah, lines. Yeah, that hold that hole. Yeah, yeah. These, these tension li uh, steel cables. Cables. And... You know, he would ping it. He takes off his wedding ring. It's this old video from the 70s. Yeah, and he, and he just hit it, and it would make the blaster sound. Yeah. But in that um, video, he's got strapped to his side this old tape machine that he's using to record it. Yeah. Damn thing was sitting on his desk. That tape machine? Maintained oh. like it was brand new. It looked brand new. I'm like, see, but, I'm but such you look a on nerd it, for this, yeah. And you and you see like <laughs> the serial numbers and even a date on it, you're like, I'm like, Ben, is this is this what I think it is? He goes, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing's been with me forever. I'm like, Yeah, literally forever. <laughs> what the what? What am I looking? You know, I was I was yeah. just so shocked. I'm like oh. and it looks like immaculately maintained. He's like, Which Yeah, I've taken yeah. care of it. <laughs> but if you also look at it, it was built like a tank like yeah you yeah. you could take a sledgehammer to this thing and it was the crazy work. thing is, is that you know your iphone can do higher quality and such but not the same it's not the same warmth. and you Which know is what he said he said yeah the, 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 the physics behind tape saturation and stuff like that oh, i mean it's, it's still worth it for me to record stuff on analog yeah if you want to get that sound yeah i yeah. was i i recently got rid of all my old real to real decks finally. what did you have I had a Tascam 8-track uh, and a Tascam 2-track. No way. And uh, recorded on those for years. What kind of years. Tascam 8-track? Because uh, I had a Tascam 388. I was talking about all this with Andrew Cascino uh, when we did the Sagarera episode of, of this. So we, oh, was that? He's, Andrew was in here. Oh, Andrew was here, yeah. Love uh, Andrew. And he is a huge tech guy, so we were talking Very mics talented and musician, machines. Oh, way. yeah. As so. well as you are. And you know what? I am going to actually <laughs> shift for oh. a moment, pivot, if I will. Can Don't we talk about it. some of your music? Sure. Yeah, we can. So how long have you been playing music? I thought when I was a callow youth <laughs> that I was going to be like a musician, rock star. I don't know what the hell I thought I was going to be. Yeah. Then I got, you know, then I got more realistic of like, no, I'll just be an actor. <laughs> like no improvement there in terms, of, <laughs> in terms of the likelihood of you making a living. It's just not, it's not the best choice you can make. Um, but I always sort of kept up with music and was, it was something that I always just did for fun until friends said, well, why don't you just put this out as an album? So back like in 2000, I don't know, 2006, I think okay. I, I put out an album, yeah. um, under the label, the crash tones, which crash. was my group, which is, uh, and, uh, it's all songs that I wrote and performed and, and, uh, so I've been. I've been trying to come up with a follow-up for that for many years now. And uh, very, very close to finishing the second. And, okay. And uh, the second's way better than the first, so. And if you, <laughs> oh, well. And so, but people can can get the yes, first. Yes, the first yes. one, yes. If, on iTunes, iTunes or yeah. uh, Spotify or okay. Amazon, Crash Tones. The Crash album Tones. was called Colorful of the Stereo. And um, you play a little of everything. Yeah. A little bit of everything. I play everything on that album except drums. Wow. Um, and and I didn't play fiddle on the song. <laughs> oh come on! Sing. I know. Okay, maybe I did. Uh, maybe maybe, I did. maybe no, you um, did. Uh, yeah, the Sith lie. They take credit for <laughs> That's things. Right. That... It's a passion. Is it, it is. It? Yeah. it is. It's the thing that on because it's a passion, it goes in the back burner. Like work happens, yeah. and then you things don't get like to work this happen. It. This happens. Talking Star Wars. But but what's been cool is recently I've been able to really nudge it along and and. It is so damn close to completion, it, it's driving me nuts at this okay. point. To the point where it's actively making me unhappy. Have you ever had one of those things? Where, oh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, of course yeah. you have. I mean, even uh, like these shows and putting this studio and building this together, it's like right. everybody's going, when's this? You know, and you're like, well, I'm working. And... Yeah. And, and you, you go to sleep at night and, you're, and it's like there's a cluster of 
of neurons in the back of your brain that are screaming <laughs> at you going, are you going to get back to that? Yeah. And you're like, oh. My stage show was like that for many years. And then finally, of course, and Star Wars Weekends allowed it to really come to fruition. And yeah. okay, I've got to do it. Yeah. Push so. The way I would say is that everybody that's watching, and of course all of you follow Sam already on, on social media and stuff, is in, just send him encouragement of can't wait to buy that new album. <laughs> just just encourage the poor guy. Just encourage him. So you get <laughs> yeah. yeah. But okay, so so many various parts of your career, musician, actor, on camera, as well as voice. And uh, we can certainly, you know, I want to talk about the on camera work, but I also want to talk about all your voice work because it's, ex it's extensive. And it, it goes back, I mean, all the way I noticed, what was it, like Soul Calibur? Okay. Yeah, that was a Force un Unleashed thing. That was yeah. um, and a slightly anime style me, sort of. Right, and then, and then so, the Force yeah. Unleashed. Yeah. You were obviously a Star Wars fan before all of this because you yeah. know more than even Dave Filoni at times. Don't ever say that to Dave. Don't say that to Dave, okay. Um, but how did, how did this... Uh, Vader's Secret Apprentice come about because that's David the... Collins, dude. David Collins. Yeah. We have him to thank for for me even sitting here. I mean, David Collins calls me up one night, and he says, "Hey, can you send me your?" And you guys were just buddies. We were just friends. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just just pals since two thousand. I think. Okay. I went to college with one of his best friends growing up. Okay. And, uh, so yeah, David calls me up one night and and goes, "Hey, can you can you send me your real and your resume and I'm like why it's like well Darth Vader has the secret apprentice and I'm like what the, I'm sorry say that again what what, he has what, now? Yeah. what who has what and he goes dude I, I'm sorry forget I said that I'm not allowed to talk about it just send me your stuff and I was like okay and then the last thing he said in the phone call he's like it's weird man the character looks like you I'm like what so they were developing models and things before they even because I mean he did eventually become you because they yes. based it off of you. It is you. Sooner or later it became literally me, but but he started out resembling me regardless. He's, uh, Amy Beth Christensen, uh -huh. who worked on Clone Wars right. and works on Rebels, she, uh, you know, they were, they were designing these characters for the, the Force Unleashed and there was a very strong character concept painting that she made okay. and then it got approved. This is going to be Starkiller. And David... And Dara O'Farrell, and I think right. someone, I think one more, I don't know if Peter Hirschman was yeah. in on this, but they, they all went, that kind of looks like your friend Sam. <laughs> and, uh, and so David slipped okay. my headshot in the pile, and because my headshot, at the time I had sort of a shaved head, which is what they wanted the character right. to look like, um, it just kind of went to the top of the pile, like, well, this looks like the painting, doesn't it? And, and then at the audition, I've never to this day had to... Uh, had to work so hard wow. because some most auditions you go in and you act for you know you might talk to someone for a little bit and you sure. but you'll act for maybe six minutes seven yeah. minutes ten minutes at the outside it's in usually, between all that yeah usually it'll be like two minutes whatever it's a quick little thing you show yeah. them what you can do and you leave uh this audition was like 45 minutes of doing really? these scenes over and over again in every what way. if we did it this way how about if you did it well that? but i how was the guy that said that i said oh well, really i'm like it's a he's a sith apprentice right so i mean i could do this 50 different ways what what is it that you want and hayden blackman's like well let's do them 50 different ways and i'm like oh i shouldn't have said that <laughs> so so we we did we just did it in every conceivable way that i could think this character could be you know, in terms of his energy, uh, more innocent reads that were a little bit more Lukeish, yeah. Uh, more cynical reads, more Darth Maul style reads, right? And to my uh, delight, um, well, they they eventually. I Hayden said he knew he was going to hire me when there was a scene where Star Killer is meditating, mm -hmm. and so I was meditating, but I kept kind of going, having these little like like moments of you know yeah. like tension and he goes hey i got a question after we did a take and they're filming all of these and he goes right. why are you doing that why are you doing these little ticks when you're supposed to be meditating yeah. why are you doing that and i'm like he's a sith trained apprentice he doesn't know how to meditate he's got a lot disturbing him a lot of bad things yeah and 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 i remember and hayden goes and That's brilliant. he said That's great, to me, he's man. like, that was the moment I knew I was going to hire you, is that you were already thinking like a Sith <laughs> and uh, thinking in terms of Star Wars mythology and, yeah. and 
what this character might be going through in his training. And um, and then and then I got the part, and okay. Hayden Blackman's script was. I mean, it was unbelievably. It's good. so uh, important to the storyline of Star Wars. It is. It is really is. I love that you had mentioned how these two were kind of coming up around the same time, Clone Wars and this, mm -hmm. and uh, telling this story. It's. We it's didn't know about you, by the way. Oh yeah, no. we didn't know about you. I don't but, know if you guys knew about us. It was. It I remember was... them talking in the studio uh, after it was. Right. I, you know, we're going. Wow, what is this? What's going and, on know, over yeah, there? What, yeah. Two very different things, and yeah. you get these vibes of like, oh, this is different. Yeah, you know, you know what's interesting? Yeah, two two apprentices of the same guy, both with reverse lightsaber grips. Oh yeah. I don't know if that was a coincidence or if that was by design. Huh. But both Ahsoka and Star Killer yeah. do a lot of reverse grip lightsaber stuff, and they were both trained by the same guy. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that is interesting. <laughs> kind wow. Of interesting. Anyway, continue. You were... No, no. I just I I see the uh, importance of it now too looking back and it's it's a crucial piece of darth vader's puzzle too you know what i think of when i think of clone wars and the force unleashed yeah this is what i think of um do you remember after revenge of the sith george is retiring do you remember yeah that? he's retired yeah he didn't retire no. he, this is a lie he didn't retire but that was the word and star wars that was it, six movies. I even heard yeah. Katie Lucas said to my face, she's like, there will never ever be another Star Wars movie, said yeah. Katie Lucas. <laughs> and um, we carried that torch, Clone Wars and Force Unleashed. Yeah, this was where it's gonna this go. This where Star Wars was, and, and we carried the torch to the new yeah. stuff. Yeah, That's the way I think of it anyway. I, I, it's the way I think of it as well, and I think it's just such important work and, and getting behind these characters in ways that we had never seen, yeah. finding out new things about the Force in ways that we had never seen, seeing someone do something with the Force that we had never seen. Mm -hmm. It was really crucial. And then you have Clone Wars on the flip side doing it in other ways from the story before all of that. So it really all made sense, yeah, beautiful it did. sense. It, it really did. did. And there's, there's a part of me that longs for that sense again. Uh, again, it's not a discouragement of where we're at now. It's just... It's a different time period in, in, in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope everybody loves and appreciates it all as much as, as you certainly do, and, and I do too, because I think it's so important. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it, it makes a lot of people happy. And, yeah. and the only way to approach it as an actor, I think, is to feel lucky that you have an opportunity to contribute and also to realize that this is a service to that fan community and yeah that's that it's like having those really stellar moments in life you hold on to those but you yeah. don't hold on to them in a uh now i'm gonna take another drink and think about it. it's i'm gonna raise a glass to it that's right it's 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 something like these characters are there are situations where uh the character is bigger than the actors that oh like, yeah i mean it's you know. like i i again i i've said i'm so blessed to have been a part of the words Obi-Wan Kenobi in any way. Mm -hmm. And I'm just grateful for my, my place in it for all this time and to get to perform it more than anybody else because of Clone Wars and stuff. And it's like, so that alone is enough. But what I think is interesting is that, is that without Force Unleashed and Clone Wars, very much Clone Wars, um, would the Disney purchase have even happened? No, no. But no, but I, yeah, and, like and, and again, it's not like a... It, it, it's, it's a situation where it would have been a dead franchise. It yeah. would have been a franchise that hadn't put out anything new since 2005. And they might have seen six. it as something, but it Five certainly wouldn't have been what it had become. Yeah, I, it's, it's a service. To be able to serve this fan community and this um, story, this mythology, is the, the biggest honor. You can never kind of go, oh yeah, Star Wars, well... Of course I'm going to be involved. It's like, no, it's Star Wars. Yeah. And it's like, oh, really? I get to play Star Wars? I, I, I still kind of, I wake up days and go, wow. Yeah. What a trip. So do I. Being a voice actor, I mean, that's all I've ever wanted to do is be a voice actor. And getting yeah. to play in so many of these wonderful franchises, you just have to, and that's why I think people continue to work as if they're just grateful to have yeah. those moments. Yeah. I mean, you know, should, should, um, 
because the characters are, are in fact bigger than the actors that play them. Should um, you know, should should Disney decide to do like a Darth Maul movie and they have someone else, or or if yeah. there's more Darth Maul animated and for some reason, you know, it's it's time for someone else to take that role. It's like I'm just pleased to have been able to contribute and like I said, carry the torch. Yeah. And, and then you, yeah, you pass it on to the. It's still, but carry it's the still, baton. Is it a baton or a torch? Straighten you can carry out. either one or and a lightsaber. You light like saber. the baton, uh, on fire. right? But it's, um, it's one of those things where you always stay an ambassador of it. Mm -hmm. That's like you know when I talk to Tracy, it's like uh, Tracy Canobio at, at Lucasfilm. I'm an ambassador for you guys, no matter what, right. whatever you need. I want to do. I want to do it right, and I want to show the the beauty of Star Wars and the right. fun of it to everybody. And and it's the same with you know Fred Flintstone here. I've been the voice of Fred Flintstone off and on for uh, you know, 13 years. Mm. And some sometimes it's me, and sometimes it's not me. And you go, right. okay. Yeah. But when it is, I, I love doing it. Absolutely. You know, so you're just Absolutely. grateful for it. But so Star Killer, um, Galen Merrick. He's here's my here's my thing. I've never really talked to you about any of this before, <laughs> but he's the clones have the Force. Is this, is this odd in any way, that, or is this? You know what I mean. If, if in fact he was a clone in that second one, that that's yeah. a situation where maybe, maybe not. You maybe never, not. You really okay. Mm. There was actually, a, um, I believe the story for Battlefront, something like that. There were there was some other Lucasfilm stuff that that uh, explored whether clones you could clone a Jedi, and yeah. generally the the consensus was. Um, you probably that's difficult <laughs> yeah <laughs> so but that became kind of a thing that, and then you know the other theme um that I, I i love both jedis and sith have trouble truly killing off characters don't they whether it's uh, uh coda or yeah. is, am i pronouncing it yeah right? general coda yeah coda, um, or I like blinding them though yeah I like blinding but even them. vader with star killer you know and then uh, of course obi-wan and anakin is right. like oh he's I've left him for dead. He's fine. You know? I mean, he's not fine. I yeah. got him. He's dead. There, there's he's, this we, running ugh. theme. We need to finish the job. Even Maul. always got to finish the job. I thought I finished the job, says Obi-Wan. I, <laughs> I know. But I, 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 I repaid you. I, uh, <laughs> you know, right. I let you live on a couple of occasions. That's right. And in um, the end, Obi-Wan got Maul. How was that? Uh, you know, we, we, <laughs> we're, obviously this is a Clone Wars show, but um, to, to say goodbye to him in that way, did you feel a sense of peace about that, the way that it was done? Because it was beautifully done. I, I kind of loved it. Yeah. I kind of loved it. I, um, for, for one thing, um, talk about welcoming casts. There was uh, such a feeling of um, respect from the Rebels actors. Yeah. Because you show up and you're like, okay, I was all very comfortable with Clone Wars and here's that and, and now I'm walking on and it's... Um, William Shatner once said it, he, he goes, it was so weird to be on Star Trek Generations because usually I'm the guy that goes, people come on the set and they go, hi, welcome to Star Trek. And now I'm walking on a set and they're going, hi, welcome to Star Trek. And you go, <laughs> yeah. what the? That, so yeah. I, you feel, a, a sm I mean, look, yeah. I, it would be completely arrogant and sick, like <laughs> for me to put myself in that to compare myself to Shatner and Star oh, Trek, no, it's like no, it's, it's, Clone Wars no, it's a great, mine, but I it's felt a great like storyline. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but to to go over to Rebels and uh, I I remember my first day there. Um, Freddie walks in from off the street, spots me, sits down next to me, goes, "Dude, dude, I've been waiting for this for a long time, man. What's he's, up?" He's so nice. He's, he's such a fan and so sweet, and it's like. Come on, really? <laughs> yeah, he's he's totally into it, and yeah. he's, he's the right guy for that role. Um, yeah. I'm going to say something here that um, that people may not be aware of, mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to say it because oh. I am so happy that he got that role. Yeah. Um, I was in heavy consideration for the for the oh, Kanan role. Oh, and yes. do, do you know that I was actually the first voice of Kanan? Were you really? Uh, for I believe all I was the, the second. All the pilot stuff Is that, that right? they did. Yeah. I was the I was the second. That's and so funny. for a long time, I was being told, like, oh, you know, it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah. And then they found Freddy. And I remember thinking at the time, being like, oh, well, let's see what he does. And the <laughs> moment I saw what he do yeah. did, I was like, okay. oh, there's only one guy that can do this. Yeah. Role. There's only one. I don't even know if Freddy knows that. I don't know if I told him that. Oh, but, like, he, well. he is so perfect. 
and, and for and that role, like he's you, like so effortless. But like you as well, he was such a fan of Star Wars, mm -hmm. and and so then deserving to kind of be able to play in it. Yeah, and, and, uh, yeah. No, well, I we did uh, pilot yeah. presentations, and it was myself, D. Bradley Baker, and Catherine Tabor, mm. and uh, we were doing all this. We knew we would not be playing these characters. Right. But we were all still under the NDAs of all of this. And <laughs> Dave needed people he could trust and he right. brought us in. And I recorded um, quite a bit for that as well. And uh, and again, it's the way it turned out is the way that it should have turned out. Yeah, very, it's very all good. And it's that. a wonderful cast. And, uh, and I'm happy that I got to play. I recorded all my stuff alone because it was all secret when I did Obi-Wan. So yeah, the, the work on Rebels is um, important to the the lineage of of clone wars of where clone wars is gone and where right. star wars is gone and wrapping it up and it's a big uh it could be looked at as a big hornet's nest of how do you make all of this work now and dave and the folks there have done a brilliant job of mm -hmm. making it all work tying up loose ends yeah and and there's still a lot of stories i'd love to see you know finished out that we had been working on you know jumping back to clone wars yeah uh season seven and you know we were supposed to go to season eight that would have been great i would have loved it if we did uh we would have probably seen a different story that we now see but yeah such is life but clone wars has been such a big uh part of yours and my life uh, all this time and i can't thank you enough for coming in and talking about no, it but no and talking about on camera stuff though mm -hmm. i mean i love your story frank darabont now uh <laughs> pretty close buddy and yeah he was he was kind of a critical part in the timing of of things happening or sort of i mean i actually got hired for force unleashed and the mist i believe within a week of each other is that right okay that was not a bad week <laughs> just like and in fact i worked them back to back as well um, really? but but i remember i i think i'd just been hired for force unleashed okay so i was walking around with john williams stuck in my head yeah and then i was walking over to an audition that I really didn't want to go to, that I was not happy about. Okay. And some lady was coming across the street. I remember this story. Yeah, this this is stuff. what I was getting. Yeah, at. she yeah. had all these bags of things, and she was jaywalking too, which is huh. illegal in LA. Don't kids. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. And so she um, dropped her bag oh, no. of stuff in the middle of the street. There were cars all the way down that were like coming. And so, and no one else was helping her. And in fact, the person, the guy next to me snickered, which I thought, I think that might have been the impetus for me yeah. to do something. Because I'm like, oh, yeah. I was maybe going to keep on, walking, but man. you just snickered. So I ran in the middle of the street and said, could you use some help? And she goes, oh, yes, thank you. And so I helped her gather her things up. And then we were walking to this building. And I had my head shot on my hands because I was going to that audition. And I'm like, what floor? Oh, we're going to that floor. Oh, I was going to that floor too. And I hit the button and have her bags and I'm not saying anything and she sees my headshot she goes you you're an actor I'm like yeah yeah so then I follow her to the same office that I was heading toward I'm like oh oh she's a casting director okay uh -huh. cool. and she goes hey everyone this is Sam he's an actor he just helped me out let's buy him lunch and I remember thinking oh sweet free food this is, <laughs> yeah because you're this an actor great for in an actor. Hollywood this yeah. is so good and she goes oh wait instead of free food and I'm like, oh, no, no more free food. What's up? <laughs> she goes, would you like to read for something? And I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. So I did, I think, a bad job on the audition that I went to go there for and then got these other sides for the thing that she's going to audition me for. And I had about 15 or 20 minutes with the sides and there was a there was a romantic scene, there was an argument scene, and there was like a freaking out, crying, wow. losing your mind scene. Wow. And so I had about 15 or 20 minutes to, to sort of prepare that. Um, which could only be prepared in 15 or 20 minutes because at this point you're like, well, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> you're just, Who cares how this goes? Yes. There's nothing I can do about this. This Submit. is not my fault and no one's going to hold me responsible <laughs> yeah, if I go up there I, and I did suck. a nice thing and it's I have fine. Given, it's yeah, a payback. I okay. Up stuff. <laughs> it's okay if I suck. So you go in there with no expectation and I do the audition and afterwards she goes, you might have saved me here. Frank is going to love this. Oh, this is, this is fantastic. This is great. <laughs> Who's your agent? It starts asking me these questions. Yeah. And I'm like, great. W what is this? Is this a TV show? She goes, no, it's a movie. I'm like, okay. So then I leave and she seems all excited. And it was Thursday or Friday that this happened. 
think it was Thursday. Okay. So then I'm driving home and I call my my manager and I say, listen, I just met this woman in the middle of the street and I did some audition and Frank <laughs> is going to love this. What the hell just happened? Yeah. And so my manager, I hear typing and he goes, okay, uh, if you're going to that building because for the other audition that you say you blew, <laughs> um, that would have been Deb Aquila, big casting director in the city. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. I'm glad I helped her across the street. Right. Um, what's the project? You know, she's like, well, she's casting, and it sounds like based on what you described, uh, that would be The Mist. I'm like, Stephen King's The Mist? Yeah. He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, they're doing a movie of that. Who, who's this Frank guy? Yeah. Frank Darabont. I'm like, <laughs> Frank Darabont, Shawshank Redemption, Green Mile. Yeah, yeah. Both Stephen King things. Frank Darabont? <laughs> yeah. Who has a very good track record for adapting Stephen yes, King, Frank Darabont? Yes, he does. Boy, does And uh, they're like, and my manager's like, yes. I'm like, well, this was an interesting day. <laughs> So then Friday comes and goes, Saturday comes and goes, Sunday comes and goes, Monday happens and I get a call, I think in the morning. Yeah. And the call is Frank Darabont would like to have you come be in the mist. Wow. It was that quick. That's great. And I believe I was like the second actor hired for the, for the film. Really? Yeah. And uh, according to him, um, it was a double dose of good luck. Darabont, I believe two weeks before my audition, uh, was forced, coerced, if uh-huh. you will, to watch a television show called Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Um, a guy named David Scow, who was the screenwriter on The Crow, and is also a wonderful novelist. Yeah. Um, he forced Frank into watching the show. Frank, who didn't want to watch the show, and then Frank <laughs> watched the show and blew through it in no time. So the way Frank tells it, he yeah. never got the story about me and Deb. Me walk across the street. He, he saw knew you. nothing about that. It's crashed says, down. Was it crashed? Down? Crashed down on Bell yeah. Circle. Like, so he was on his treadmill, as he says, and he was watching audition tapes. And I guess I was the first one to come up for the Jessup character. And as soon as he saw the audition, he apparently got off the treadmill, called up Deb, and said, "Hire that guy." And he goes, "It's crashed down. Hire, hire him." So he recognized me from Battlestar. So I guess I owe Ron Moore for that one as well. Okay. Ron, who wow. I just worked for, actually, is that right? Recently, on a on a thing called Electric Dreams, which has not aired yet. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, is it a strange world that we never could have imagined when we were younger, thing of being actors, that everything would be an NDA, everything would be, you cannot talk about it, you know. Nothing at all. There's, it's amazing we've been able to talk as long yeah. as we have here. I've said that I'm working on Electric Dreams, and that is all I'm allowed. Okay, say, yeah. yeah. All these things. You never, never now, ever talk about anything. <laughs> How about, I mean, but there's so many things, uh, you know, Walking Dead, Star Trek, Jag, Battlestar Galactica, of course, Bones, Dexter, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Was that fun? It's a brief thing. That, yeah, that's yeah. my buddy Glenn who uh, helps run that show, and so they wanted me in there to be. Smallville, there. Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time, yeah. Yeah, it's very recent. cool. Very cool stuff. Yeah. But uh, Being Human, I love that show. Oh, I loved you. you on that. Uh, so much fun. Was it, was it fun? I mean, it was, yeah. Good time. It was so much fun. We had a, a really good group on that. All show. in Vancouver? Did you shoot in Vancouver? Uh, or? Montreal. Montreal. I'm Which sorry. Yeah. No, I made the same mistake. When when I when I was getting hired for the role, they were like, well, it shoots in Montreal. And like the very ignorant American <laughs> that I am, I was like, I don't want to shoot in Vancouver. They're like, we just said Montreal. I'm like, I know. It's all the same, right? Canada? Yeah, yeah. I've wanna... <laughs> already spent so much time in Vancouver. I don't want to go back to Vancouver right now. Which... <laughs> Is in itself a stupid thing to say because Vancouver is beautiful. It's beautiful, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. So my stupidity was compounded but by just, somehow yeah. saying that Montreal and Vancouver are the same. Yeah. And then by disparaging Vancouver. <laughs> so I was just like being a complete idiot on the phone and complaining about getting a, yeah. a nice job, <laughs> just just doing nothing but complaining. Yeah. And and they said, well, you know, you might really like Montreal. Yeah. And then I went there. Mm-hmm. And I loved Montreal. Like, yeah, it, yeah. it's I've done so many jobs where they just send you in various places and you live places for various months of time. Yeah, and Montreal mm-hmm. has got to be the most lovely, comfortable, beautiful living somewhere else experience. If you're gonna life. live somewhere else on a project, work in Montreal. There you go. Oh, okay, my, I was really happy there. I thought it was. We're great. gonna move this show to Montreal. Dude, soon, yeah, actually, it's just, perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll go with you. Wow. Yeah, and it was like, um, uh, I think like 52 episodes or more that you guys yeah, did on that did. show. And... We did We did something. You know what's funny is um, the way that the show ended, um, I've always felt weird like, no, one, no one's really going to believe me when I say that we 
purposefully wrote to an ending really? in yeah. season four. Yeah. Um, because that that's never an opportunity that's given to anyone. No. Um, but our showrunner, Anna Fricky, did make the request and it was granted, can we write to an end season four be, before any of season four was written? Right? Wow. And it was because of various weird stuff that mm -hmm. was happening behind the scenes with international financing partners. Weird stuff that had nothing to do with ratings, weirdly. Yeah, um, yeah, because the show was, I mean... It was doing well. Yeah, yeah we were doing classic just fine. still. You know. um, um, and uh, and I, think, I think our ideal was that we, we wanted to do five, and in fact, we were going to shoot four and five, seasons four and five back to back, and we, uh, we thought five would have been a great number. Yeah. But when the weirdness started happening, um, I remember Anna getting a hold of us or getting a hold of me on, on uh, you know, instant messenger. And she goes, what? She's like, I have my take on this, but what do you think about, about us writing to an end in season four just to make sure that we have a handle on how this show, right. how we steer it back to port and how we end it on our own terms. And right. I said, so I think important. that's, I totally support that decision. I think that's wise. Yeah. And so she did make that request and it was granted. Now, yeah. where it's a little bit, Strange is, is like sci-fi said we grant that but we will not agree that that is a, that it's going to be the last season and we're like Okay, but we're going <laughs> to end it if you do anything beyond this It's gonna be some sort of weird reboot and we're gonna yeah. put you in a position where you can't use these characters anymore because we right. knew This meant people were going to die and yeah, yeah, things yeah. were going to spoiler really, alert. Yeah, right. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and so um, we went in really happy that we had a chance to end it because you never get that opportunity. No, you don't. I wish we had with Clone Wars. We, yeah. And because of that, that's why yeah. Rebels is ending in season four. Yeah. Because Dave Filoni is like, look, the story that I'm telling, yeah. the ideal length is four seasons. Right. That's the ideal length of how far the story goes. And, uh, and furthermore, it's, I mean, the satisfaction that a creator has to make the story go as long as you want yeah. and then end it on your own and terms. It, yeah. That's... So when, when Dave told me, he's like, I'm, I'm going to end it in season four, I had this very petty little voice in my head that went, see, I'm, guys, I was telling the truth. This does happen. Sometimes people go, don't go, yeah. hey, g just keep giving me money to do this. Yeah, I yeah. I do it as exactly long right. as I can do it. Right. There are times where, where people not only have the idea to end it when they want to end it, but also they're granted that respect. Yeah. And I, I have to thank Sci-Fi for letting us do that. Do yeah. that. That's um, awesome. So, um, you know, and, and I know Dave is very happy about being able to provide the conclusion that he wants to provide. for. Yeah, it's Rebels. important. It is important. And again, it would have been great if we could have done it with Clone Wars in that sense. But I was so grateful to Netflix allowing those lost missions to come into play, so which really cool. did wrap it up in a way to where we can feel that piece. Those of, last episodes. Yeah, it's very important. If you If you think about the thematic stuff that's happening in those last episodes yeah. with Yoda. Yeah. That's a pretty damn good end to this it's, series. It's really fantastic. And, it, and for that to go into Revenge of the Sith, mm -hmm. that's really awesome. It is. Well, uh, before we wrap and go into the little booth here to do a reading, which is uh, chosen just for you, oh, good. Sam Whitworth, I, I just want to say what an honor it was working with you, especially in that those uh, those last episodes, you know, where we said goodbye to one of my favorite characters, the Duchess, and Anna was here, and we talked about all that, and she talked about your brilliance as Maul and what it was. But I remember very specifically that day doing those episodes, and Clancy and you and Anna, and myself, and Ian, of course, there, yes, and that yes. made it very special too. Um, I don't know any memories of of that doing that day, and and your thoughts. When did you see Anna and I? Anna knew, I think, a little bit before I found out the day of when I got the script and we got to that part. Oh, God. Because, you know, we didn't, I didn't get the scripts and get to read through. Did you know you were going to be Dave putting an end so to worried. the Duchess? Yes, Dave was so worried about all of the Darth Maul stuff that I was given an unprecedented amount of Okay, access. yeah, because, you know, I mean, we all got, I, I would walk in, uh, D and myself, and everyone, we'd be sitting there going, oh, okay, how you, yeah, good to see you, yeah, you know. Because yeah. that's it. You're reading. Uh, By the way, you know, for the record, that's that's more. I got less and less notice the more confident Dave became in Darth Maul. By the time we got to Rebels, um, we would still have our discussions, but they would be like the day of, or they would be like, yeah. you know, in passing here and there, you know, beforehand. Um, which, by the way, speaking of what we talked about with voice actors, yeah, 
you show up on the mic and you're not half as good as you practice. However, if it's a character you've done over and over again, yeah. then it is there. It does show up on the day. It does yeah. actually, you know, and, and Darth Maul became that for me where yeah. it's something I can just do now. But in the beginning, it wasn't. I didn't no, know. No, yeah, and you're it. worried and you're insecure um, about it, yeah. But, but having said that, anyway, to, to go to your question, I was aware of all of those things well in advance for no other reason than for the entirety of Darth Maul's run on Clone Wars, the worry was there that we were going to really mess something up. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I mean, yeah, we talked wow. about it all the time, how worried we were about, about this. Now, when it came to Rebels, we were not worried because we'd gotten away with Clone Wars. So even with Rebels, we're like, if we don't do something weird when he shows up, the fans are going to be disappointed. So right. now let's just do whatever the hell we want yeah. and not worry. We worried, but we didn't right. worry as much. Not the same way. Yeah. yeah, it's like when you worry about your kid when they're five as opposed to when they're 12. It's a different world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm dealing with now. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. again, the importance of Clone Wars, not just to the world of Star Wars, but to the storytelling of that what they're even doing now in the yeah. world of Star Wars. That's so great. Well, how about if we reunite Obi-Wan and Darth Maul Fair one enough. last time? Let's do it. And I thought, you know, we've done Shakespeare on this show. We've done um, various writers of... of but one of the greatest film writers, uh, William Goldman, uh, The Princess Bride is one of my favorites. And uh, I've never seen it. Never seen it? No That's joke. Just... No, of course. I know you've seen it because you yeah. quote movies all the time in the studio. And I thought, uh, what better way than to have the man in black and an Ingo Montoya battle it out as Darth Maul and Obi-Wan. So for you now, a little scene from The Princess Bride. Enjoy. Hello there. Slow going. <laughs> Look, I don't mean to be rude, but this is not as easy as it looks, so I'd appreciate it if you just wouldn't distract me so. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I do not suppose you could speed things up. If you're in such a hurry, you could lower a rope or a tree branch or find something useful to do? I could do that. In fact, I've got some rope right here, but I do not think that you will accept my help since I am only waiting around to kill you. Yes, that does put a damper on our relationship. But I promise I will not kill you until you reach the top. Well, that's very comforting. I'm, I'm afraid you'll just have to wait, though. I hate waiting. I could give you my word as a Sith. No, no good. I've known too many Siths. You wouldn't happen to know any way that you would trust me. No, nothing comes to mind. I swear on the soul of my brother, Savajo Press, that you will reach the top alive. Hmm. All right, throw me the rope. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Ah. Ah, thank you. And of course, we shall wait until you are ready. Well, again, thank you. I don't mean to pry, but do you, by any chance, happen to have six fingers in your right hand? Do you always begin conversations this way? You see, my father was slaughtered by a six-fingered man. He was a great Sith, my father. And when the six-fingered man appeared and requested a special lightsaber, my father took the job. He slaved for a year before he was done. Impressive. Most impressive. I have never seen its equal. Yes, the six-fingered man returned and demanded it, but at one-tenth his promised price. My father refused, and without a word, the six-fingered man slashed him through the throat. I love my father, so naturally I challenged his murder to a duel. But I failed. The six-fingered man did leave me alive with the six-fingered lightsaber, but he <sighs> cut me in half. Hmm, sounds like a charming fellow. Uh, how old were you? I was 11 years old. When I was strong enough, I dedicated my life to the study of fencing and the Sith, so that the next time that we meet, I would not fail. I would go up to the six-figured man, and I would say... Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. You're quite scary. Um, uh, you've done nothing but study swordplay? Well, more pursuit than study lately. You mm. see, I cannot find him. It has been 20 years now, and I'm, 
I'm starting to lose confidence. I just work for Vizini to pay the bills, and there's not a lot of money in revenge. Yes. Well, I certainly hope you find him someday. You are ready, then? Whether I am or not, you've been more than fair. Mm, you seem a decent Jedi. I hate to kill you. You seem a decent Sith. I hate to die. Begin. <laughs> just seems a natural fit, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, just, uh... Okay. Thank you, Sam. This is great. You know, it's crazy, but I actually see quite a few similarities between the man in black and Inigo and Kenobi and Maul. It's such a great time getting to play one last time with Sam Whitworth. My thanks to Sam, and I hope you've enjoyed this two-part episode and that you come back for more this season, including Lux Bantari, Jason Spizak, next time. And then a couple more two-parters with Anakin Skywalker, the chosen one himself, Matt Lanter. And then I sit down with writer, reporter, and all-around Star Wars geek, Amy Ratcliffe, as she turns the tables on this host and interviews me about my time voicing characters such as Obi-Wan, Plo Koon, Reiko Hardeen, O.C. Sobek, and more on The Clone Wars. If you've not yet subscribed, please consider doing so to the Jat channel for your regular dose of conversations, not just in the world of Star Wars, but Final Fantasy, Ratchet and Clank, Marvel, DC, Disney, and so many other great properties and franchises that I've been blessed and humbled to get to work in as a Hollywood voice actor. In fact, check out the other playlists and videos here on the Jat channel. There's literally hours of content for your enjoyment, all free and hopefully lots of fun. I want to also thank Mountain Valley Water, the official water of the Jat channel, and this very thirsty voice actor. Thanks again, and join me next time for another Clone Wars conversation.